So I hear some scuttlebutt around the internet from time to time about camera noise and film grain and matching grain and ignoring grain and not liking grain and liking too much grain. And it just, you know, so I figured I'd compile my thoughts on the matter in a constructive way. These are some of the best practices when it comes to compositing and film grain. There are aspects of this that have to do with personal taste, but there's also stuff that you really need to pay attention to if you want something to look realistic and you want to be a responsible human being. Okay. Whoosh. So here we have a shot from one of our recent films, and this is a VFX shot. This hand and this gun here weren't actually in the shot. This is added in post, and I haven't done any paying attention to the grain here. And just so it's easier to see on YouTube, I'm going to boost up the gain and the gamma of our viewer just so you can see what's going on. It's a little bit easier when we just really pump up this grain. And even though I am making this a lot stronger right now, you can still notice it just if you don't have the compression of YouTube and you're not looking at a screen capture of my screen that's gone through two rounds of compression and all that stuff, okay? But the same principles still apply. So first thing, anything that you shoot with a camera will have some kind of grain or noise. Some cameras have more, some cameras have less. In this case, we have a very dark shot and the darker parts of the image are very, very grainy. Okay, and again, this is pumped up a lot. It doesn't actually look quite this bad, but you can still sort of see it, right? This is without any kind of color enhancement or anything. But for the sake of argument, let's say that our grain normally looks like this in our shot. There is a certain amount of this kind of grain that we sort of expect to see sort of subconsciously. If we have a completely smooth, noiseless background, there's just something that looks a little bit weird about it. It just doesn't look quite as organic, right? And with a shot like this that's lit primarily by firelight, we're going to expect quite a bit of noise. Now, when you composite something over a shot, whether it has a lot of noise like this shot or whether it just has the normal amount of kind of just acceptable noise, it's always a good idea to match the noise between whatever you're adding to the shot and whatever your kind of background is, right? So here we're adding this hand and this gun, and let's play this back. It might not be super noticeable without me enhancing this, but if we take our gain and gamma up, take a look at this. We have this dancing grain here in the background, and on the gun, there is no movement of the grain at all. It just stays exactly where it is. That's because this is just a still that's being moved around. Even though this is from the same kind of shot, the grain isn't dancing around like it is in the background. There's again this kind of subconscious weird thing that makes this look fake because it doesn't have the same texture as everything else. I mean, I guess it does, but the texture isn't animated, so it doesn't match. So for that reason, we need to deal with this in some way for these two elements to look like they belong together in the same shot. One thing that we could do would be just to add some dancing grain to this still, but what we'd essentially be doing would be kind of double graining it, because look, this already has this kind of grain texture on it, it's just not animated. So if we want to have this dancing grain, we either need to use a video that's shot with the same camera, kind of under the same settings, so that has this similar dancing noise, or we need to get rid of this static noise and put some dancing noise in. For this particular element, which is just this still right here that we've cut out, we could put noise reduction on there and then take up this spatial like that and then kind of get rid of the noise that way, but it will soften it a little bit. So here's before and here's after. And we can do kind of a sharpen after that. And that can kind of get rid of some of that. That might help a little bit. Honestly, what I use to get rid of noise all the time is something called Neat Videos Reduce Noise. And so this is a plugin that is separate from Resolve that you have to buy. But man, I completely love this. You can just select kind of a uniform part of your image that is noisy and it builds a noise profile and it will really get rid of that noise. Works especially well on video, but you could do this for a still. Right, and we'll kind of get rid of the noise like that. And then we could do something like add noise with something like film grain. Then we kind of just zoom in here and we can see the kind of grain that we're adding. And we can try and match the grain size and kind of just match this noise to this noise. And now we have this grain kind of dancing and changing on the gun that sort of matches our background, right? And then it doesn't look quite so weird. The problem with this is that to match this grain to this grain, um, it's really hard and you're never going to get quite a perfect match just because this generated film grain is never going to look like the actual grain that you shot in camera. This is better than not doing anything, but it's still not quite the best. So 
Other thing we could do would be to use a sample of some grain that we've recorded from, from this camera, which if you conveniently have that laying around, that's super nice. So I can import some media. I have some Sony noise right here. This was shot on a, the background plate and this noise were both shot on a Sony camera. And the time code's not going to match up here with this media in one. So I'm gonna go over to the inspector and click loop. And that's just going to loop this. And if we again boost up the gain and the gamma here, we can see that we have this noise that's gonna look very similar to our background here because this is both shot on Sony sensors. This is both high ISO. It's gonna be pretty darn close, okay? So this is a great way to go about it. And so what we can do is do something like just merge this over our arm picture and we'll mask it. We need to resize this here. So now we're laying this grain over our clip like this. And we can do something like change the size of it to match and we can get a little bit more and we can color correct this with something like brightness contrast, add some contrast like here, and then set this merge to something like screen. But it's gonna be tricky to get this all to match still. So when we turn off our gain and gamma, we're gonna get a better result probably uh, with a lot more control and it's gonna be okay. But there are a few problems with that. One is it just takes a lot of tweaking to make this work. Two is we have problems with the alpha channel. There's a bunch of technical things that are kind of annoying about doing it this way. And so really the best solution for matching your grain is to remove all the grain from everything and put grain on top of everything that is uniform uh, across the whole image because then everything sits together nicely and there's no surprises. There's no weird, you know, matching this color to this color and all of that stuff. You don't have to deal with masks and merging a bunch of junk. Okay. You already have to do enough of that. So we can take this away. Let's just get our gun with our noise reduction on it. And then let's actually just put some noise reduction on our original footage as well. So we'll say reduce noise. Again, you can do just the built-in noise reduction for Resolve, which you know has kind of its own learning curve and it's very quick to render, which is nice. But man, this is just so easy to be able to just select a section that's noisy, hit Build Profile and hit Apply, and then it takes away that noise. So here's before and here's after. It just really reduces that. So here's with it kind of boosted up, here's before and here's after. It just takes a lot of that noise away, okay? Now that we have our foreground element and our background element denoised, everything is denoised, we can add our camera grain over everything again. So again, I mean, if we want this to match perfectly with the other shots, then we can take this Sony camera noise and just merge it over. Again, we'll just resize this. And we can do something like set our apply mode to screen and let's color correct this with brightness contrast. I like to make sure to clip the black and white for something like this in brightness and contrast and kind of adjust this to where we're getting that grain being applied uniformly over everything. And it's not brightening or darkening the image too much. If we turn this off and on, it's making a little bit brighter. So maybe we'll take this lift down just a touch. Yeah, now we're not doing a whole lot to mess with the brightness of the image, but we are adding this grain back in here. See, and now if we play this back, we have this kind of uniform grain all over everything, both the foreground elements and the background elements, and they look like they belong together, right? There's nothing weird about this still. It doesn't look like a still. It looks like it's part of the actual footage. Look at this with a little bit more boost. Now we see we have the same grain in the foreground and background. That's pretty cool. So that's really why you want to pay attention to that is just to make sure that everything sits in the frame and looks uniform. The other thing that we really should do with grain is grain is always stronger in the darkest parts. So the brighter parts here shouldn't really have as much grain. Now, naturally, when you put something like this kind of overlay over things, you're going to see it more in the darker parts than the lighter parts. So part of that is kind of taken care of for us. But the other thing we might want to do is do something like a luma key with our footage here and I could take this image into a luma key like this and I'll just load this in the first viewer and we could invert this luma key and basically what we're doing if I hit a to go to alpha is we're making a mat of the darkest parts of the image so anything that's really dark is going to be white anything that is lighter is going to be darker and we can change this around and maybe we'll just really kind of crush this so that wherever we want to add grain is lighter and anywhere where we just don't want to add as much grain is going to be darker. We do it this way because we're going to take this here like this and just plug it into our mask input of our merge for our camera grain like this. And now it's going to take that alpha channel and it's going to apply the grain 
just where the white parts are in this mat, basically just where we have their alpha channel for our mask input right here. And now if I turn this merge off and on, we'll see it's mostly being applied to the darkest parts. If I take this down a little bit so we can see it and everything isn't just clipping. It's not really being applied to the brighter parts, which is how grain works in general. That's a more realistic way to apply that grain is it's stronger in the darker parts. Now there's all kinds of little details and stuff about this and about different profiles of grain and how camera sensors work and all that stuff. And that stuff's really cool. But I mean, if you do a basic version of this, where you put your grain on and you make it stronger in the darker parts and less strong in the brighter parts, you're going to be doing probably just fine. But yeah, pretty important to respect the grain so that everything looks like it sits in the same image. There are a bunch of different ways to do this. I like using a just a grain sample from a camera like this, but there's no reason you couldn't just do something like film grain and just add that over your image too. And it does essentially the same thing, but it's not going to look exactly how it would look if you shot this in camera, which if that's important to you, you'll want to use some kind of sample. If you just want to have some texture, after you've removed all the grain, adding film grain totally works. And again, you can use the same Lumicure trick to control the strength of that film grain as well. Same thing. Here we have the film grain being added to the darker parts, and we're essentially leaving the lighter parts alone. Whew, so that was a little more in depth than I thought it would be, but I hope this has helped all you aspiring VFX artists. Make sure you respect your grain. If you want to learn a little bit more about nerdy things like this, we have a course available. It's called Pro Compositing Infusion, and it's available now at groundcontrol.film. We also have a link down in the description, so I hope you enjoy that. And uh, what is your favorite grain? Mine is wheat, but barley's nice too. I actually don't know if that's true. I don't know all of my grains, but I assume wheat is probably one of the main ones.